Okay. Uh, what is your favorite Sabbath or time of year ritual? Um, Halloween. 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 That is my favorite time of year, period. I, I love too. I love Samhain. It is my happiness and joy and everything. The girl in the boy is she's a Yule mood too. Oh, yes, I am. I, I love that. Hey, that's a question coming up, so we'll save that for later. Yeah, I, I'm all about the Halloween, Samhain. She is. Whatever you want to call it. That, that's my thing. No question about yeah. it. Yeah. So, I'm... Um, your question, which is, I guess, a pointless question, but it is a question. Uh, 24. Have you ever had a YouTube burnout? I, I, I know what y'all are asking, but as this is my first video, anything ever being put on YouTube, no. <laughs> I've always avoided YouTube because I don't like having cameras in my face. I like being on the taking the picture side. I am the same way. I have put videos up on my personal channel. Um, they are private now, except for some audiobooks. I have never had a YouTube burnout because I've never been on YouTube enough to really, you know, qualify, I guess. So, um, what is your favorite witchy shop and do they have an online store? Oh, uh, my favorite witchy shop is an online store. And it is Amazon, because you can fucking find anything on Amazon. Um, it may not qualify as a witchy shop, but it is where I get much of my witchy supplies, so. Um, my favorite familiar magic website coming soon. No, uh. Uh, well, okay, granted, um, yeah, okay. Our shop would be my favorite shop, because we fucking are awesome, but, you know. But, uh. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I usually, shop, I, think. I usually tend to buy my stuff off of Amazon. You can find decent prices. And you can find almost anything and everything you need in one place. So, not sponsored. So that's apparently a thing you have to say now. Um, totally not sponsored. Yeah, not yeah. sponsored. I, I think but Amazon it, is like the evil Walmart of the online world, but, yeah. Oh, it definitely is. It definitely is. But, you know... There are even witchy shops on Amazon, so, you know, third-party sellers, so, yeah. Okay, 26. When buying witchy items, do they choose you or do you choose them? I think that depends on the item, the person, and the situation. Well, I think it, it, I think it depends on the item because, well, the person would be you because it's asking you. But I, I, I definitely think that it depends on the item. I mean, there are items that I see and cannot pass up, like my current Oracle deck. I've never been an Oracle person. I've always been a short tarot person. But I fell in love with a tarot deck, or an Oracle deck that I had to have. You can ask her. I just got it. And I am so in love with it. It has gorgeous artistry. It has, oh, it's so perfect. I think items is more of a, a mutual thing. Yeah, maybe. But, I mean, not to sound Harry Potter, but, you know, not the wizard that chooses the wand, Harry. It's the one that chooses the wizard that just lets you think it's your idea. And I'm a huge nerd, so y'all will have to deal with that, too. Oh, yes, you um, Yeah, because you're not at all nerdy. No. Yeah, and you're really 24, too. Just <laughs> 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 I don't need any of the commentary. Peanut gallery, peanut gallery. Um, question 27. How do you organize your herbs and ingredients? Um, that's a very fucking weird question. Um, it depends on what it is. I keep my stones, uh, my big stones in a box, in a beautiful wooden carved box. Um, my, my oils, it depends on the size bottle. I have a lot of essential oils, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot. <coughs> yeah, she's a uh, essential oil whore, yeah. Well, it started when I became a soaping addict. Um, um, so, it depends I, on what it is. My cards I keep wrapped up in these, um, scarf I use 
to read them on my herbs. Um, depending on the herb, I keep in glass apothecary jars that I get at the Dollar Tree. Some I keep in the packaging they came in. My bulk items, I don't have the room for 18,000 gallon jars to put all my herbs in, so I kind of keep them in the Ziploc baggies that I can zip really tight and reduce the room. Um, me personally, I'm still rebuilding, and so I don't have a whole lot of organization stuff, no. Um, my, my house is pretty much cluttered up at the moment, still working on... Mine too, my, my craft room, which is also my witchy room, is, um, very scary right now. <laughs> Trust um, me, it is. very, yep. very, it, it, it's frightening. Her crafty witchy room looks almost as bad as my kids' bedrooms, and we won't even go there. Yeah, uh, it's because I have so much crafting stuff, because I get, I have ADOS, which means I want to do all of the crap. All oh, of the crap. Yes, I want to do all of the things. I have, um... I have soaping supplies, I have polymer clay, I have resin, I have jewelry making stuff, I have paper crafting stuff, I have all of the witchy stuff, so it's, it's kind of a clusterfuck because I have a very small house, um, so there's not room for all of my stuff. But I am working on that and I will be getting rid of the stuff that I don't use as much, which will break my heart a little bit, but you know. I need the space more than I need the stuff. Okay, so 28. Do you have interest in other deities that you don't work with? If so, which one? I, I don't know. After seeing a lot of the other videos and the experiences people have had with the gods and goddesses, I've been more searching for the, the patron stuff here lately. And uh, I, I have no idea. I do have an interest in some, but quite honestly, when you start reading the the lore and stuff, some of the gods and goddesses kind of scare me a little bit, I'm not even going to lie. But again, due to watching videos, there are those that I never even thought about considering before that I'm looking at in a different way. So, there is that. Um, as far as who, I would have to say, um, Hecate, or Hecate, or Hecate, however you care to pronounce Hecate, it. Hecate, 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 um, everyone pronounces it different. I concur. Um, I, 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 I've never been drawn to her, but that might be due to the fact that she's my mom's patron. Um, I, I have I have interest in all the gods, um, and goddesses and deities, um, <coughs> because I like learning. I I'm a I'm a nerd. I love learning about everything, and I think all of them are useful and can be called upon. Um, um, no, it's it's. I, I'm interested in learning as much as I can about all of them. So, yeah, I would say that there's interest in other deities that I don't work with. Uh, 29, do you have a favorite time of day to do spell work? If so, why? I am nocturnal, so my favorite time to do spell work is at night. Um, I am very, very, very nocturnal. I prefer to do spell work at night. I do. However, usually by the time that I can even get to that point, I'm ready for bed and because after waiting on the kids to go to bed and all that stuff you know it's usually really late yeah well you prefer to do it at night but you due to constrictions on your time you have to do it during the day usually yeah. which i don't think it makes too much of a difference whether you do them during at night or during the day but i, I think we both prefer evening to do the spell yeah, if it, it's something that's going to be really involved, I, I try to do them during the day when my kids aren't here. Less right. Interruption. But I do prefer right. to do them at night. Me too. Um, I will do them during the day when my husband's at work and my daughter's at school. If it's something that I really don't want to be interrupted during because, well, I... Ugh, I always get interrupted. I have three. So, evening um, or night is preferable to me um, because I'm nocturnal, but I have a rotating body clock, so I don't know. Okay, 30. Are you solitary or do you work with a coven? I am so solitary, it's scary. <laughs> she is. Uh, 
I really I don't like working with other people. If I do work with you in a spell, consider yourself one of the very, very few. I don't, you haven't worked with a whole I know that we've done many spells together, but the only people yeah. I've ever worked magic with is you and the husband. Uh, the dragon. Yes, but yeah, uh, um, quite honestly, the idea of working with a coven has always kind of weirded me the fuck out. I, I, I agree there. Um, I am also a solitary witch. Um, I have worked with my daughter. I have worked with Kit, obviously, uh, Lilith. Um, Get down. Actually, I've worked with <coughs> Lilith quite a bit, but, um, as far as Kevin's and stuff, I don't like them. I, I, some people it works for, I have severe social anxiety and PTSD, and that is not something that works for me. Well, I'm just, I'm not a social creature. I, I don't deal well no. with large groups of people. Uh -huh. And, I mean, you know, most of these Kevin's I don't think are that way, but it's always kind of creeps me out. And how do you know it's a Kevin and not a cult? And before you're into it, way too late, you know? I don't even have that issue. My issue with them has always been more of, uh, in a coven, you're supposed to fall in line, and I've never been good at falling in line. And, you know, every, everyone, at least in my opinion, that you decide to cast a circle with, so to speak, because I usually don't work in circles, but... Me neither. You need a lot of trust, and I don't trust We both have major, major trust. We both have extreme trust issues. So I think that pretty much answers that for both of us, so. Yeah. Um, so my question or your question? My question, sure. right? 31. If you could pick a certain witchcraft tradition that fits your practice, most, what would it be? Druid, Celtic, Wicca, etc. Um, I couldn't because I'm very eclectic. Um, I think Hedge Witch, maybe, or Celtic, I don't know. Um, I am so very eclectic, I could never just choose one. I think if I had to choose one, it would be more your Native American shamanism kind of thing. But yeah, I, yeah. I, I see myself as a pagan or, well, just a witch. I don't follow any I'm a witch. Rules. We're yeah. both very eclectic. I could, I, 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 I can't choose just one because there's so many aspects of so many of different sects of witch, uh, paganism that, um, Get that cord out of your mouth. That appeals to me, you know? Yeah. And I don't want to get your cord out of my mouth. That sounds really bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fluffy keeps trying to take off with my headset cord. <laughs> she wants you to pay attention to her. Because she's a little witchy bit. 32. Oh. What was the most creative spell you have ever done? What did you use? Yeah, creativity know. is not my strong point when it comes to spells, which is <coughs> funny because I, I've done so much in, creatively speaking, craft-wise, but when it comes to the craft, uh, I kind of suck at creativity. Um, so I, I tend to, I mean, I, I tweak stuff here and there, but I couldn't call anything truly creative. I, I helped uh, Echo out last night with some spell work, when and she has literally no which he supplies, so I kind of flew out of the seat of my pants on that one. And I did, well, I did create an oil for dispersing, dispersing uh, negativity for my sister-in-law. Does that count? I, I guess. Um, I don't know. I, I don't really consider spells to be creative. I guess they can be. Well, I heard of a witch once, you know, getting rid of uh, evil beings with a twizzler, so there's I think that goes with the intense thing. Um, I don't know. I mean, unless you want to consider my crochet stuff as a spell, I mean, that's about as creative as I get. Oh, uh, yeah. Actually crafty stuff, but... Yeah, uh, my most creative stuff is, like, you know, spell candles and spell bottles and stuff I'm making. Um, that would be, you know, spell soaps and lotions and 
Well, but, quite honestly, I don't consider myself knowledgeable enough in spell crafting because most of the time I don't actually cast. I'm getting better about that, but, you know. Yeah, I'm getting better at casting as well, but usually I just put my intent out there. Um, well, usually, but, you know, I'll go find different spells and I'll, I'll like this part of this one and that part of that one. and uh, We do well, tend to, we do tend to uh, piece together sleep quilt together spells. Um, because I, I am a researcher, you can ask uh, Lewis. I love research a little too much. Um, so I'm getting better at it, instead of just looking everything up, actually applying it. But we're both really good at uh, taking parts of spells and uh, making a new spell out of it. Yeah, I, I think, you know, you just piece it together, or maybe you add something that means something more to you. Whether it be a, a charm or a different herb or right, that that's my level of creativity so <clears throat> far. I, I I can agree with that. I I think we're both pretty much there. Um, what do you? Uh, question thirty three. What do you prefer for divination, tarot, oracle, runes, etc.? Typically, it was I would say tarot, but lately it has been oracle and my pendulum. I've always wanted to do the runes. I just never have owned a rune set. Oh, let me do that. Um, and you got witch mail. Pendulum. I again, I've never worked with a pendulum. I just recently bought a a point to not only use as a, a jewel, you know, jewelry. To help shielding and healing and all that kind of stuff, but also to use as a pendulum. Like mine is, I have an amethyst that is a necklace that is a double point, so um, it is also my pendulum. Like, like I said earlier, Tarot has never worked for me. I just never have found a deck that matches well with me. So I would definitely go with Oracle. That's the only kind of divination yeah. stuff that I've tried that works for me so far. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, what are some ways you keep yourself grounded? Well, like I said, I live out in the country, very nature-ish, and I can ground myself simply by just going outside, flipping off my flip-flops, you know, standing in the dirt, and I'm good, or playing in the dirt in my garden. On occasion, I, I, I will do, like, the, the shower meditation thing if i feel like I really need to cleanse myself kind of thing, but I uh, I put the energy into the ground. Um, sometimes I'll release it in the shower or whatever, but yeah, I kind of just ground when ground and center and uh, do my thing with pushing all the negativity out and throwing in positive energy, and that's pretty much how I keep grounded. I don't really do anything special. <clears throat> 35. Have you ever had a spell go horribly wrong? Oh my fucking god, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't think any witch has not had a spell go wrong at some point, whether because the intent was wrong or, you know, a deity decided that didn't really fucking need to be that selfish and you don't need that shit. Um, so I did a love spell when I was about 15, 16, I was young and stupid, and, uh, so I did a love spell, and it was not really particular, um, and it caused a whole lot of issues. I had a plenty active love life, but I never found love love because of it, um, and I was so stupid that I didn't know how to break the spell or undo the spell that I had done, and I was too embarrassed to really talk about it, um, until I was well into my 20s, and honestly, my relationship with my husband and Seth is the longest relationship I've ever had. We've been married almost three years, and we're together two years almost to the day before that. Uh, me personally, yeah, I've, I've had spells go wrong. But I don't know how much of that was, you know, just going wrong or the divine intercepting it and changing what happened. I mean, 
personally, I believe, you know, you, you can do the spell all you want, but at the end of the day, if it's not something that's supposed to happen, it's not going to happen. Right. You know, I really don't think spells go wrong in general. I, I think, yeah, if you have the lack of intent or whatever, yeah. And I have had a spell go wrong because my kids went messing with the spell on my altar when they were... Little. I have I have had that same problem, someone messing with a spell. And I have had people actively going against the spell before I knew how to block shit like that, so... Yeah. Okay, 36. What are your opinions on initiation rituals? Hmm... I really don't have an opinion. I mean, I initiated myself years ago, and I've actually been considering redoing it because for the longest time I didn't practice, and I didn't ignore the my witchy path. I just didn't feel comfortable following my path at the time. So I've considered renewing it simply for that reason, but I really don't have... As far as initiation rituals go, I think of stuff like um, Kevin initiation rituals and stuff like that. And I, 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 I kind of think it's a, it's a personal thing. If yeah, if, and, and you cool. You if know. you're okay with it, that's all well and good for me. I am not okay with someone telling me that I have to do something to be who I am. Which is kind of why I'm not in a coven. Um, I, I really don't think that it matters what my opinion of initiation ritual is. It matters I, your I, opinion. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I, uh, me personally, I think it's bullshit. But to each their own, and I'm not going to judge someone because that's their thing. 37, <laughs> have you ever had full contact with your deity? If so, what happened? No, I have not. I have had full contact with deities, but not my deity. So, yeah. Um, I have had a few experiences. Loki. But I really couldn't tell you, like, exactly what it meant. Which one it was? Um, yeah, we've both had experiences, but they were very vague, and uh, uh, I don't feel comfortable with talking about what happened because it was very personal. So moving on, thirty-eight. <laughs> right. What about you is unwitchy? Oh, uh, listen to the ego and the less balance because she thinks nothing about her is unwitchy. I, I can't really think of anything that's unwitchy. Uh, I, I, oh. She has her own witchy tendencies, but they're few and far between. She is exceedingly witchy and always has them. But one of the reasons she's my best friend. As far as me, huh, I bet Kate can determine what is most unwitchy about me. I love Christmas. I absolutely, it's one of my favorite things. I love Christmas and uh, I like Christian music, um, depending on uh, what song it is. I think when you have that much love and passion in anything, it's beautiful. So it's not about the religion aspect behind a lot of the stuff. It's um, it's the feeling. It's that beautiful feeling. I think I love Christmas because you can take one of the biggest assholes on the planet and they tend to well, up until recently, be less of a dick that time of year. Um, for the dating witch, how do you tell a new love interest that you're a witch? I've always been upfront about that. Um, it's one of the first things I say before, if I like someone, I tell them up front about who I am, my past, which is not a good past, um, that I have PTSD, um, that I am pagan and a very proud witch, um, and I won't change for anyone, and if they can't handle that, then it sucks, but I'm not going to change who I am. So I've always been kind of upfront about that fact. Um, so I understand it is really hard to tell people you're a witch. What's your opinion? I've always just told people up front. I have never hidden it. I think that that's something that needs to be up front to begin with and not, you know, six months into the relationship. Oh, by the way. You know. I agree. I, I agree. Um, that is something, in my opinion, 
But you should, I think anyone who, you know, meant to be with will expect you no matter what. And if they don't and want you to change, then they're not meant to be with them. Yeah, it's yeah. the wrong person. I mean, no. my husband freaked the hell out when he found out I was a witch because he was raised where witches were evil and, you know, we put hexes and curses on everything. Um, but everything about him went against what he had always heard. And so he asked questions and learned, and eventually he accepted me for me. So, I mean, sometimes if they freak out at first, you have to give them time to adjust, I think. Your question. Who is a past witch that has inspired you, famous or not? That's a difficult question. I mean... I it is. I guess in the beginning, my mom and my cousin-in-law, I guess, they they were into the, the witchy stuff, and I would listen to them talk, and, you know, I, I've always been able to see and hear spirits and stuff, so I paid attention, and that was where it all started. And later in life, when I actually started my lovely little past, um, probably Silver Raven Wolf, a lot of her books, that was... Some of the better books that I started out with. Um, Lecture Rosine. Yeah, Lecture Rosine. She is by far my favorite author. And, I mean, she she might disagree with me over there, but her, her mother. Because her mother is like the witchy crone guru of wisdom. She, she my mom is not past, though. So, so true. That, that's kind of a, a past, present, ongoing thing. Yeah. Uh, my mom has always been an influence on me, um, positive and negative, because my mom is uh, very opinionated. We will her say her, her mother is very set in her ways, and she is she is not open. She is open minded in some ways, but in other ways, she's so close minded it hurts. My mom <laughs> is a wonderful person, um, but she has her things, and I don't agree with them. And if you don't agree with her, she's very vocal about it so my mom has been an influence on me on things I don't want to do things I do want to do she has been an influence on me in a lot of ways Lexa Rogine is an influence on me um uh Silver Ravenwolf yes she has um Silver Ravenwolf was one of my earlier ones um I don't know, there's countless witches that have inspired me in a lot of ways. Um, as far as witches who inspire me, honestly, lately, uh, Lady Sunshine, <laughs> Lady Gravedancer and Sunshine Morning Ray and Raven Flower. Again, are, you're welcome. Yes, and thank you, you <laughs> asshole. Um, <laughs> I, I love them, and they have really gotten me pumped and back into what I had completely lost of myself um, after my dad died. And my dad was another um, major influence on me. How do you handle, 41, how do you handle rejection from a fellow witch that refuses to do a reading or spell for you? I don't really ask witches to do a spell, spells or readings for me. Other than Kit, and if she says no, I'm pretty sure I just go okay. I've never asked other people to really do spells for me. Yeah, I don't ask people to do spells for me. Well, I, I did ask Kit to do a fertility spell for me, and I asked my mom to do a fertility spell for me. Yes, she did. She did ask me to do the fertility spell, and I did have to say no to that because. I, I had this dream that if I helped her do it, that I was going to get knocked up again, and I'm done. And I, I, I completely, I, I'm okay with her saying no. Um, she's had six kids. I wanted her to do it because she is the most fertile person I know. <laughs> yeah, but that, that last one almost killed me, and I, I am done. Yeah, yeah, I know, honey, and that's why I'm I'm okay with you not doing it. I did my own, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Not that. Um, but no, I I really don't ask people to do spells for me. 
Nor do I, yeah. so I really don't have an opinion on that one. You have asked me to do readings for you, though. Yeah. But we tend not to tell each other no for the most part, so <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, we we are best friends. I mean, we pretty much share she, everything. Everything. And we have shared a little bit more than most people. <laughs> yeah, well, we're not going to go there. <laughs> uh, but at least she's my sister in every way possible. She really is the my sister of my heart. So but I no, I'm not, I'm not going to just go and contact some person that I don't actively have in my life and say, hey, and, you know, that, that's not my thing. For me, a spell work is personal, so you have to have a connection to the spell. Agreed. So, 42, do you think it is necessary to cast a circle when you do spell work or any magical working? No. Um, no, I don't believe it is. I don't actively cast circles. I, I, we have cast circles before. Yeah, but I, it, I, I it have depends. done it. it. I think it depends. Uh, for certain rituals, I think it's safer to work in a circle. But for active, everyday spell work, um, no. I, I don't have time for all the ceremonial rituals. I, I don't. Kind of I don't. I don't either. For me, um, no. I do. I do think if you're doing like a specialized ritual, like whether it be a, a Sabbath. Wickening or something like that, then yes, by all means, cast a circle. Cast a circle. And, but you for, know, if it works for you, if you think that you need to cast a circle, by all means, do it. Some people it feels right for. For me, it's always, it just seems tedious to me and it doesn't feel right to me for no, the most part. I, I, just, I usually don't go there. Right, me neither. So, uh, number 43, if Steven Spielberg called and wanted to make a movie of your life, who would you want to play as you? Seriously, that's a witchy question? Alison Hannigan. <laughs> Only because she's hot. Sandra Bullock, because I want to be like the practical magic chick. Um. Yeah, that was fucking <laughs> awesome, but that was my luck. I'd be more like Piper. Um. Um, Actually, that that that's who I want. I want to take you play Piper. I, I would be okay with the the creepy chick from the craft. I mean, oh yeah, yeah, she was pretty fucking awesome too. I mean, okay, yeah. I mean, I, or, or the goody witch from the craft, you know. I think out of all of them, I uh, uh, Piper. Yeah. I yeah. don't know her real name, so I suck. Um, names are not my strong point. Holly. Holly something or other. Yeah. Yeah. Or, Holly. Holly something or other. <laughs> we'll go with that 